Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I have another repair project for you. I picked up this slightly bizarre typewriter toy called the Typatune, which allows the user to play a typewriter keyboard layout like a chime piano. And of course, when I found it, it was broken. The Typatune was developed by a man named Alex Rose in the 1930s and officially went into production in the mid 1940s as a hybrid piano and typewriter toy. I've linked down below the Oz Typewriter blog post about this curious machine so you can read more about the original patent and check out some of the older designs of the Typatune. I found my Typatune in February of 2022 in an antique store in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which I featured in one of my thrift trip videos. The machine didn't play anything in the store, and it took me a while to work up the confidence to find out why. I started by opening the machine up to do a quick clean. There are about six screws that hold this machine together, and it consists of a bottom metal plate that attaches to all the mechanisms, and a metal topper that comes off and reveals the typewriter innards. Inside, I noticed a few things. The first thing I noticed was how simple the mechanism was, which gave me some hope. The basic design is that the key tops are attached to long arms that pivot, strike a hammer, which then hits a metal rod that vibrates out a note. There were about four missing rods at the bottom of the keyboard, and I noticed when I would press a key, the hammers were actually blocked by the metal rods and didn't strike them to cause a vibration. It looked like someone had taken off the set of chimes and moved all the hammers to the opposite side of these pivot points, which means they wouldn't strike anything. I removed the chime and was able to put all the hammers back into place. They looked a little curved and did seem to slide around a bit, which posed a problem for accurately hitting the pitched rods. I then did a quick clean of this machine. I did use an air compressor to blow out all the dust and gunk to make sure everything could pivot easily inside the machine. I then used Simple Green to do a quick clean of all the parts, including those plastic keys. The first issue I tackled was the missing V key on the keyboard. I wasn't quite sure how to do this. I probably could have found someone with a 3D printer and had one made, but I'm slightly impatient. So I opted to use some air dry clay to mold a key shape. I made sure to fit all of my key options to the arm to ensure that they had a slot to slip onto that key and then let them dry. After they dried, I haphazardly painted them white and then I used a Sharpie to draw on the letter and fit it to the keyboard. Voila, no more missing keys. On to the next task, which was to find a replacement rod for those bottom four notes. At this point, I actually ended up needing to replace five because one fell out. Whoops. I looked around for some pre-cut options and I thought I might be able to use clock replacement chimes to slot in and fill those spaces. I ordered some on eBay that were longer than my lowest note and found that they were not the right size or width or even notes. What we discovered was that the original chime pieces were just 1 8 inch brass rods that had been modified to ring. So I found some 1 8 inch brass rods on Amazon and we set up a jeweler's lathe in the basement to start making our own chime pieces. This process took a bit of experimenting. What we discovered when we broke off one of those chime pieces is that every brass rod consists of a 3 8 inch base that slides into the brass base piece of the chime. It's crushed on the end so that the brass rod isn't touching all the sides of the hole in the brass base to allow for some vibrations and a pitch. After that base is a small chiseled out section of relief which lets the rest of the rod vibrate. Then you have the length of the brass rod, the length determines the pitch. We took our 12 inch brass rods and cut them down to an eighth inch size bigger than the rod before it on the keyboard. We then crushed the ends in a vise to create that crimped edge in the base. Then I was allowed to operate a jeweler's lathe, which is dangerous, and I shouldn't have been allowed to touch it, but somehow I was left alone with it to cut in all of the indented vibration points. At 3 8 from the bottom, I cut in a 1 16th of an inch relief that allowed the rod to vibrate. Then we took it out to the garage for tuning. This took some work. That's an E. E. Mm -hmm. Lower, lower <laughs> than that. So it's too long. So it's too long. We yeah. want this as an F sharp. You want that as an F sharp? Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness I'm related to music teachers. With my music teacher sister and her magic piano app, we played each rod to determine its pitch. Then we filed it down to get it into tune with what it was supposed to be. We determined each rod was a half step in the keyboard. We then tapped each rod into place and put the chime portion back into the type of tune. And then I realized we had another problem. We determined this toy must have been left on its side in an attic somewhere because the hammers had settled into an almost curved pattern. This means that they weren't hitting each note straight on. Some of them would even tap two notes at once, which will drive a person with any musical training absolutely bonkers. 
Maybe I should have left it that way and used it to drive all of my music teacher family members nuts. We decided to straighten out all the hammers ourselves. We removed all the hammers and then placed them in a metal clamping device we made with two pieces of metals, some nuts, and bolts. And then we baked it in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour. Yes, we baked them in the oven. Don't let anybody tell you I can't cook. This allowed us to make sure that each hammer was absolutely straight and melted into that position. We then decided to make the holes on the hammers slightly bigger so that they wouldn't get stuck on the rod since they might have been affected by the melting process. I once again was allowed to use a power tool. I don't know why. Don't try this at home, kids. So I went to the drill press and re-drilled all of the holes. Then I sanded each piece down so that nothing would cause any friction and attempted to put them back into the machine. Because there was so much extra room, the hammers tended to slide around, so I used some cardboard spacers used for pianos to keep everything in place. I ran into a ton of issues here on my first go. I didn't know how many I needed and where. And once I got them back into place, I still had slipping issues. We determined we had actually drilled the holes too big, so the hammers were actually sliding sideways and would miss their notes which meant we had to go back to the drawing board and redo the holes with a metric drill bit. So I learned how to mix epoxy. That was new, and filled all the holes with epoxy on all of the hammers, and then we re-drilled them to the correct size. Again. Once they were redone, I placed them back into the machine, spaced them out with the cardboard spacers to make sure each hammer lined up with its own arm, and then boom, I had a musical instrument. Now for a type test. Behold the musical stylings of just my typewriter. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I have more videos on this YouTube channel and I have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you that you're just my type, writer.